Well, good afternoon and thanks for taking the time to go through this week's Toolbox Talk. Today we're just going to have a look at vehicles and pedestrians. We're going to have a detailed look into safe movement using segregation. So separating vehicular uh, movements, plant, vehicles, cars, uh, from, from pedestrians. <clears throat> Excuse me. So why do we want to keep pedestrians and vehicles apart then? <clears throat> vehicles at work, they continue to be a major cause of fatal and major injuries. So every year there are over 5,000 incidents involving transport in the workplace. And about 50 of those result in people being killed. Um, estimates suggest that up to one third of all road traffic ac accidents involve someone who is at work at the time, um, which is obviously uh, not great. Um, and we want to try and do what we can to get that down. So the first thing to discuss then would be safe site design. You know, especially yourselves, <clears throat> you work within the construction industry. Every sort of construction site that you go to to do your surveying or whatever it might be is going to be completely different. You know, you'll have different sizes, different layouts. There'll be, um, you know, there'll be constraints on uh, how much free space there is to, to ensure that you've got um, managed walkways and, and managed vehicular sort of roadways. So a well-designed and well-maintained site with suitable segregation of vehicles and people will make the workplace transport accidents less likely. So whenever we're thinking about safe site design, what we should be thinking about is how can I keep pedestrians, you know, and the workforce away from plants, moving machinery um, uh, and vehicles. You know, are we so constrained that it has to just be good road markings, good signage, or have we got a bit more space where we can use physical barriers? Obviously, the latter would be much more preferential. Um, if there's a physical barrier, you know, that is going to reduce the likelihood of pedestrians interacting with vehicles. The most effective way of ensuring pedestrians and vehicles move safely around a workplace is to provide a separate pedestrian and separate vehicle traffic route. It's not always easy to do that, especially you know, on something like a construction site because, because the site's being used for con uh, construction, you know, the site's going to be pretty fluid uh, things are going to change all the time, but that is by far the most effective way. You'd have a separate sort of vehicle ways and separate pedestrian ways. So <clears throat> if that is possible, though, ideally you should have a one way system as it will reduce the need for any vehicles to, to need to reverse. Um, and it's also then going to help, you know, and lessen the need for things like banksmen to reverse vehicles into bays. You're not going to have issues with pedestrians walking out behind vehicles and the drivers potentially not seeing them. Um, sometimes, though, circumstances might mean that complete segregation is just impossible. So you'll need to have clearly marked pedestrian and vehicle traffic routes using measures such as barriers and good signage. Um, again, you can get uh, the little flexible barriers that are... Um, a physical barrier, but they're easily moved. Um, good signage denoting crossing points, uh, warning pedestrians of, of vehicle movements is also pretty imperative. There should be separate entrances and exits for vehicles and pedestrians. Ideally, you don't want pedestrians going out, you know, the same gate that, that vehicles are going out of. You'd have a pedestrian gate as well as a vehicle gate, okay? Um, and vision panels should be installed on doors that open onto vehicle traffic routes. So all vision panels are, you know, if it's a construction site or if you're in a sort of industrial building or maybe a factory, the vision panels are just see-through panels 
on the old roller doors for four lift trucks and stuff and you'll be able to see what's the other side of that. Where pedestrian and vehicle traffic routes cross, they should be clearly marked using measures such as dropped curbs, barriers, um, deterrent paving, etc. to help direct pedestrians to the appropriate crossing points. You know, they should be highly visible for both uh, vehicle drivers and the pedestrians. Um, ideally, you know, you'll, you'll have some good signage in and around that area as well. Um, so there really is no ambiguity about where the appropriate crossing point on that site is. So in terms of keeping pedestrians and vehicles apart, uh, correction, keeping pedestrians and vehicles apart, the majority of the workplace transport accidents result from inadequate separation of pedestrians and vehicles. It goes without saying, really, if we don't have um, either sort of managed walkways um, or physical barriers, it just heightens the probability that a pedestrian is going to interact uh, with a vehicle at some point. Um, a lot of factories sometimes have mixed uh, vehicle and pedestrian traffic routes but that's mitigated by you know forklift trucks using the blue light system um, good signage workplace awareness um, the old um, what am I thinking of uh, round mirrors that you get you know, so you, you can see around corners and that's both helpful for the pedestrian and the driver of any forklift trucks, for example. Uh, it can usually be avoided by careful planning, particularly at the design stage and by controlling vehicle operations. So like it says there, the majority of those uh, workplace transport accidents, it can be mitigated and avoided and at least reduced by very careful planning um, of a site in its early design staged. Um, and at any time really, controlling vehicle operations will minimize the likelihood of those interactions um, and, and potential injuries. You know, if you are controlling vehicle operations, such as having, um, you know, five mile an hour speed limits in place, uh, such as having, you know, things like zebra crossings located for pedestrians, good signage, good warning signs, early warning systems if you know if you're if you're working in a factory or industrial setting are, are all good ways to, to mitigate that risk. Pedestrian routes should either be located a safe distance away from areas of vehicle activity or provided with appropriate physical protection such as substantial fencing and or curbs. Um, so what we normally see is uh, you'll get the old um, sort of metal uh, protective barriers so the pedestrian walkway will be the other side of that and then that's gonna you know just stop any sort of interaction between that pedestrian and say a forklift truck or a bit of plant or machinery So if we're thinking about traffic routes, um, the general principles for safe traffic routes are some of the following. So when we're thinking about traffic routes, we need to make sure those traffic routes are wide enough for the safe movement of the largest vehicle. Yeah, it goes out saying if you have got some large plant and machinery, you know, in operation on your site, the traffic routes that they have to use you know, they need to be fit for purpose. It's no good having a traffic route which is just wide enough for a car, you know, and then you've got an absolutely huge forklift truck that's, you know, three times as wide as a car because all that's going to happen is um, that vehicle is going to end up, you know, going over into uh, pedestrian-managed walkways, for example. You need to ensure that surfaces are suitable for the vehicles and pedestrians using them. So it should be firm, even and properly drained. OK. Again, you know, firm level ground, you know, 
proper drainage in place, uh, things like intercepts in place. Um, they're, they're all key considerations when we're thinking about implementing traffic routes on a site. Uh, outdoor traffic routes should be similar to those required for public roads. So if it's outside the factory, you know, if it's if it's outside in your car parks and everything else, the types of um, routes will be very similar to what you see on the open road. Speed limit signs will be, be the same sort of configuration. Um, road markings, etc. will be the same as what you see on the open road. You should avoid steep slopes. Yeah, it goes without saying, if you have got really steep slopes, you know, maybe a vehicle gets into some, some difficulty going up those steep slopes or coming down, you might lose uh, your braking system or whatever. All that's going to happen is it'll roll down the hill um, and then either interact with a pedestrian, that'd be worst case scenario, potentially leading to a fatality, or you know, maybe another bit of planter equipment or potentially building that's going to cause a lot of damage so try and avoid ste steep slopes avoid sharp corners and blind bends you want to avoid those types of things just because it makes the management between pedestrian walkways uh, and vehicle routes a lot easier um, you know ideally there should be really good visibility um, for both the drivers and for any pedestrians you know you should have clear roads where a pedestrian can see any vehicular traffic um, coming and going and, and in the same regard for drivers as well you need to keep any routes either for the traffic or for pedestrians clear of obstructions it's a pretty simple process but you know as we've discussed in in a lot of these types of toolbox talks before um, poor housekeeping can lead to people stepping out you know away from a pedestrian walkway or a vehicle having to swerve off of the main vehicle route to clear an obstruction and again that just increases the likelihood that you know that vehicle is going to interact with a person um, in which case you know you're going to have a a pretty bad state of affairs if uh, if there's any connection between the two you need to make sure any traffic routes or pedestrian routes are clearly marked and they are signposted okay so if you're operating a one-way system it needs to be clearly marked uh, you need to have signage denoting that fact you know if you have got pedestrians in the area and if there is um, crossovers so say the pedestrian route crosses over the, the vehicle route again there has to be signage for both those operating vehicles and the pedestrians um, any sort of crossing points should be highly visible and marked appropriately um, and you need to keep any sort of traffic routes properly maintained yeah big potholes um, you know broken ground all this again as we said earlier on could cause vehicles or people um, to try try and avoid those issues um, and that might then you know make them um, cross over into a into a vehicle lane or you know a vehicle into a into a pedestrian uh, traffic route so visibility it should be good enough for drivers to see hazards and pedestrians to see vehicles adequate visibility for drivers is related to vehicle speed and the distance needed to stop or change direction safely. Consider having mirrors where sharp or blind bends cannot be avoided. Um, so, you know, if you have got um, some really sharp bends or blind corners, these type of things that you know we we discussed a little bit earlier on uh, can help. So you've got the you've got the convex mirrors that helps. You know, both the drivers and pedestrians see what's coming or what may be around the corner. You get different types of those. You can get the ones that are uh, you, you can pop up onto the ceiling, or you get the ones that you can you can put onto say the side of a uh, roller shutter door. Also, what you can get to increase visibility, especially on um, bits of kit and equipment such as forklift trucks, 
uh, maybe it's an outdoor forklift truck or indoor forklift truck um, you could probably put it on other planting equipment as well but there's a blue light system um, that's you know I've seen introduced to a number of places I've dealt with now and what that does is it sits on the bit of plant or machinery and it projects a blue light so you, you can set it to different distances but it'll project that blue light sort of five ten meters in front of the bit of plant or machinery and that way if it is a blind corner any pedestrians that might be transiting the area will see that blue light long before they see the bit of plant or machinery and they know that a bit of plant or machinery is coming into their sort of locale so you know they can they can take appropriate action stop at a walkway or you know not cross the road or you know cross that crossing point at that time So speed needs to be considered. So reducing vehicle speed is an important part of workplace transport safety. Fixed traffic control measures such as speed humps, chicanes, rumble strips can reduce vehicle speed. It's important to select the most appropriate control as the wrong measure can increase the risk of those operating that plant or machinery for by, let's say, uh, reducing vehicle stability. Um, for example so it's important that obviously we risk assess what control measure we're going to put in place um, and make sure it's the most appropriate control measure for that piece of plant or equipment speed limits can be used alone but they need to be appropriate properly enforced and where possible consistent across the site All right what you don't want on a site is loads of changes in different in different speed limits it just confuses the situation so if you are going to have a slow speed limit across the site just make it consistent across the whole site that would be my advice um, to assess an appropriate speed limit consider the route layout and its usage and um, for example lower speeds will be appropriate where pedestrians are present or where lift trucks and road going vehicles share a traffic route obviously if it's just for cars say it's in the car park um, and it's just for exiting and, and entering the site you know you might not want a five mile an hour speed limit maybe you increase that to 10 mile an hour you just have to uh, have a look at um, that area of the site and just decide you know is it a high pedestrian route you know is there other plant machinery operating in the area um, what's the layout what would be the most appropriate speed for vehicles or plant to be operating at? Um, we also need to think about signs, signals and markings. So signs for drivers and pedestrians in a workplace should be the same as those used on public roads. Um, and you, you'll understand them if you've ever sort of flicked through the highway code book. Um, but whenever a suitable sign exists, they should be well positioned and kept clean. Yeah, if they get dirty, grubby and everything else, over time they're going to be difficult to see. That's going to make it difficult for you know, anybody entering the site um, to adhere to because they're just not going to know what the sign's telling them to do. Uh, where driving's likely to be carried out in the dark, you've got to illuminate uh, any signage or use reflective signs. Uh, that way... You know, as a uh, plant or vehicle headlights hit the sign, it's nice and illuminated. Uh, they know exactly what that sign's telling them to do. White road markings should be used to regulate traffic flow and yellow markings should be used for parking uh, wherever possible. Such, such markings should be reflective and maintained regularly, just for the reasons that we've already highlighted above. So if you follow the following actions, um, you will end up keeping pedestrians and vehicle, vehicles apart and that will reduce any sort of uh, accidents coming from workplace transport. Entrances and exits, you need to provide separate, ent uh, separate entry and exit gateways for pedestrians and vehicles. So you don't want the two to mix and use the same entrance and exit way. Um, Keep them separate, big gates for vehicles and plant, little gates for people. Walkways, 
You need to provide firm, level, well-drained pedestrian walkways that take a direct route where possible. Then we have a look at crossings, uh, where walkways cross roadways or vehicular traffic ways, uh, provide a clearly signed and lit crossing point where drivers and pedestrians can see each other clearly. Need to be thinking about visibility. So make sure drivers driving out onto public roads can see both ways along the footway before they move on to it. We need to make sure walkways for pedestrians and also vehicle traffic routes aren't blocked and obstructed. Yet some sites um, that I have seen are quite constricted and it makes sort of traffic uh, management pretty difficult. But, you know, if it's a set pedestrian walkway or set vehicle uh, route, then it needs to be clear of any obstacles. Uh, and barriers. So think about installing a barrier between any sort of roadway or vehicle way and any pedestrian walkway. Um, that physical barrier is just an extra layer of protection that's going to help protect um, pedestrians from any sort of uh, moving vehicles or plant. Uh, and you also need to have a sort of safe workplace mentality as well. So on site, establish vehicle routes which are segregated from pedestrian routes. Minimise the need for reversing operations with one way systems and turning points. Again, you don't want loads of vehicles reversing. Reversing is difficult at the best of times. If you haven't got banksmen trained, that's just another issue that you have to think about. Um, drivers can't clearly see pedestrians, especially at like um, dawn or dusk. Um, so ideally, you know, plan your site so you don't have to reverse around it. Have firm surfaces, adequate drainage, drainage safe profiles to allow safe vehicle movements. Uh, make sure they're all kept clear of obstructions and any other hazards. Okay, so, you know, again, if you're storing chemicals and stuff, just keep them away from pedestrian routes, keep them away from vehicle routes, um, you know, uh, storage of pressurised gas and that, keep them well away from, from any sort of vehicle routes or, or pedestrian routes. Avoid hazards such as excavations, edges of structures, fuel and chemical storage areas. Okay, so plan your site and plan your workplace appropriately so you know the, the traffic management routes don't go near any of those. You need to make sure um, signposts are very clear, uh, road markings are clear, kept clean, maintained. And you should have speed limits and speed control measures in place. So if you're setting a speed limit, again, make sure it's appropriate um, for the area of the site um, you're, you're, you're looking at. Um, and also those speed control measures, make sure it's appropriate for the types of vehicles that are going to be going over that control measure. Um, again, it can be a hazard if you choose the wrong control measure for the wrong type of vehicle. It can put them off balance. Um, cause them to tip up and all sorts. So it's important you risk assess the control measures against the types of vehicles you're going to be using. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs>